All right. So today's notes, uh, chapter two, section eight. We skipped two, six, and two, seven. You're welcome. Uh, are on literal equations and dimensional analysis. And really, what we've done in this unit is we've solved a lot of equations. What we're going to do now is we're going to solve equations that don't have that have more than one variable, um, and we're going to use formulas to to solve real world problems. That's the big picture of what we're going to do here. So solving for a specific variable. So Sometimes we have to solve equations uh, that have more than one variable, and when this happens, what we're going to do is, it's really we're just going to get, like you'll notice here, we have an M and an N, and it says we're going to solve it for M. And when you see that, what you should, what that should mean to you is we're just trying to get that variable by itself, okay? That's what it means. We're not going to get, um, this is different because we're not going to get like an M equals 2 or anything like that. We're going to get just a different version of the same equation. All right, so you'll notice here, um, the first thing they do is they, they want to get everything, they want to isolate the M because this is what we're trying to solve for and get by itself. So um, they move the 3 in to the other side and then they divide by 4. Big key here, common mistake, okay? Um, that's some unbelievably good handwriting, um, is that we forget to divide each term by 4. So just make sure that you realize, you know, you got to divide the 8 by 4, and you have to divide the, the 3 by 4, okay? But that's a, it's a common mistake. So let's take a look here. Uh, I'd like you to pause the video. Try these on your own. You're going to solve A, B, C, and D for the given variable. Make sure you recognize that the given variable here is N, here it's T, here it's K, here it's Q. Go ahead and pause the video. And when you unpause, I'll have some answers up there so you can check your work. Go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, so here are my answers. I showed some of the work. Like here, I divided both sides by 3, and then I simplified. Um, over here, I multiplied both sides by 5, and then added 2. On 1C, all I have to do is divide both sides by the quantity R plus 4. So that's what I did. Um, if you wanted, you could really write this out as 28 over R plus 7 equals t, same thing. Um, and then over here, I divide both sides by a, and then I added 8. Another common mistake is that people add the 8 to the 31. Whoops, found a mistake there. That's supposed to be an a, not an 8. Um, the, the thing you have to remember is that this is 23 over a, okay? Uh, not so, so you can't just add the 8 to it. They don't have common denominators, all right? Uh, but those are my answers. If you didn't get what I got, try again. If you're still struggling, make a note, and we'll go over it in class. Uh, sometimes we have to solve equations for a variable that is on both sides of the equation. So when this happens, you've got to get all the terms with that variable onto one side uh, and then use the distributive property to isolate the variable. And, and so here's, here's what we mean by that. So say we're solving this uh, for x. Okay? So we're looking to get that x right there, and it's on both sides by itself. All right? um, so we add 2y to both sides, and then we're going to subtract xz from both sides. And what you notice is that right here we have 3x minus xz. Well, what we're able to do is we're able to factor. It's the distributive property in reverse. So they both have an x, so I can take that out using division, and what I'm left with is 3 minus z. Then I divide both sides by that, and there's my x by itself. Okay. Um, let's take a look at these two. I'm going to help you with the first one, and then you'll do the second one on your own. So 2a. So we're trying to get d by itself, right? So first, let's Let's get the 5c to the other side. So now we have d equals 3d minus 1 minus 5c. Then I'm going to subtract 3d from both sides. So I have d minus 3d equals negative 1 minus 5c. This one's actually going to be much easier for us because d minus 3d is just negative 2d. And this is uh, negative 1 minus 5c still. And then we can divide both sides by negative 2. And I have d equals, and I could say if I wanted to, uh, positive now, 1 plus 5c over 2. All right. Let's take a look at 2b. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and walk through this one with you also just to make sure we have, uh, we, we know what we're doing. This one we're solving for q. Okay, so q so let's go ahead and add 18 to both sides. We have 6q equals qr plus t plus 18. Uh, then we're going to subtract qr. So q, 6q minus qr equals t plus 18. 
Now, the, both of these terms have a Q, so this is the distributive property in diverse. I can factor a Q out, and 6Q divided by Q is 6, and QR divided by Q is R, and that's T plus 18, and then I can divide both sides by the quantity 6 minus R, so I have Q equals T plus 18 over 6 minus R. And that's it. That's all I can do. Okay? Let's take a look at the next page. Um, a formula or equation that involves several variables is referred to as a literal equation, a literal equation. So lots of variables, more than one variable, several, that's a, or a formula or equation that's called a literal equation. To solve a literal equation, you apply the process of solving for a specific variable. This is the same exact stuff, except for now we're going to look at formulas that you know, like circumference. Um, so, for example, uh, here, we're going to solve for radius, for r, for the radius, and then to find the radius, we plug in some numbers, and we get a value for the r, so no problem, okay? Much like many a real-world problem that you've probably done before. So let's take a look at this geometry problem. The formula for the volume of a rectangular prism is v equals lwh, where l is the length, w is the width, and h is the height. Solve the formula for w. So first things first, uh, solve the formu formula for w, v equals lwh. If I divide both sides by LW, I get V over LH equals W. Divide both sides by LH, excuse me. Then find the width of a rectangular prism that has a volume of, so this is part B, the volume is 79.04, uh, a length of 5.2, and a height of 4. Okay? Uh, so if I do that, I get, uh, and that's going to equal W. And then this is this is a good example of a time when it's useful to have a calculator. So I could do uh, 5.2 times 4. Okay, so that's 20.8. So then 79.04 divided by 20.8, and I get 3.8 for the width. All right, and let's be specific. Those are centimeters. All right, no problem. When using formulas, you may want to use dimensional analysis, okay? It's the process of carrying units throughout a computation. And the way that works or the way that looks in a problem is this. Uh, a 10K run is 10 kilometers long, okay? One meter is 1.094 yards. Use dimensional analysis to find the length of the race in miles. This is really just conversion, okay? The given conversion relates meters to yards. So first, convert 10 kilometers to meters then multiply by the conversion factors such that the unit meters are divided out. So we would divide that by one. And then we're going to multiply that to convert from yards to miles. We multiply by that. Okay? So let's pay attention here. 10 kilometers is the same thing as 1,000 over one, uh, 1,000 meters over one kilometer. Okay? Then we have 1.094 yards to meters, and then one mile to 1,760 yards, and we end up with a 10K is 6.2 miles. Whew. All right, so a car travels a distance. That may be tough to follow when it looks like that, by the way, but I promise you, you can do this stuff, okay? A car travels a distance of 100 feet in about 2.8 seconds, okay? What is the velocity of the car in miles per hour? Round to the nearest whole number. Go ahead and pause the video here. See if you can figure out how to find out the, the, the rate of the car in miles per hour if you know that it's 100 feet in about 2.8 seconds. Pause the video, try that out on your own. Ready? Go ahead and pause it now. Now. Pause, 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 pause. So here's what I got. I, I got 100 feet in 2.8 seconds. Well, there's 3,600 seconds in one hour. So I want to find out how many feet that was uh, in one hour. So I, I multiply this out, uh, 100 over x, we don't know, is the same as 2.8 over 3,600. And so then I end up getting this for the number of feet in an hour, okay? But then that, that gives me feet, I need to know miles, well, there's 5,280 feet in a mile, so I divide that by 5,280 and I get about 24 miles per hour. Um, you've probably done a bunch of problems like that before, that's more of just figuring stuff out using conversions that you know. Go ahead and pause the video here. Try and do these seven problems. Uh, highlight any ones that give you any trouble. And when you get to class, we will take a look at them together. Make sure we know what we're doing. Um, and hopefully, uh, we'll be all squared away and, and we'll be able to do this stuff. All right? See you next time. Bye.